Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you had a great lunch. Uh, so when I got first invited here and asked to think about the future of food, I thought that I wanted to talk a place that is cooking the future of food, probably as we speak, uh, and also just cook the future of the present, or now the past, notably our lunch and dinner tonight. Thank you. So that's for kitchens. And mostly the commercial kitchens that churn massive amount of lunches and dinners and breakfast every day. And those places are populated by people, people who dedicate their careers and the biggest part of their lives to being there. Most part of the kitchen environment runs around... Good, figure it out. <laughs> Most part of the kitchen environment runs around one individual. He's responsible for deciding what is purchased. He's responsible for recruiting a team. He's responsible for marketing to an extent. He's responsible for deciding how things are assembled, how they are processed, and how they are served. And the rest of them, notably young cooks who come to these places with the hope of one day being able to fill this responsibility, they are the young cooks that fill them. And they dream of the day they'll be able to assemble their own flavors, they dream of the textures they'll be able to produce, they dream of creating. And to achieve this dream, they spend several years working hard, sometimes even more than 18 hours a day, more than six days a week. They go into very pressurized environments that are high-end kitchens where they hope to learn the skills that one day will allow them to resolve this creative dream and finally express what they dream about. These places are extremely competitive. The pressure to deliver at any human cost is huge, and the mood often turns aggressive and even physically violent in occasions. They go there and they will follow day in and day out from sometimes seven in the morning until past midnight, very precise instructions in the hope to deliver the utmost idea of perfection that has been concocted by the center of this universe, the chef, to be served to the lucky guests who come and to whom they have very little contact. So if our young cook that joins this environment managed to be there and actually thrives in this very, very difficult place, if he managed to survive and deliver what is expected of him, he will eventually get promoted to the ranks and one day arrive to this coveted position of being the head chef and finally be in a position to create. And he'll be able to do his own thing and express his own ideas. So how does or young cook, now turn young chef, approach this task? How do you approach the task of creating for the first time? Well, we know thanks to the work of psychologists like Daniel Kahneman and others that our brain works like associative machines linking information from our surroundings and our memory banks. We recombine that and we create new ideas out of it. We also know that we are extremely prone to biases and that the opinion of those that surround us will tend to influence massively our own, will give supremacy to the opinion of our superiors, will also rely a lot in small repetitions in a large set of data, thinking that they are present and are an overall pattern. This makes that in a heavily mediatized and heavily globalized world, or frames of reference are filled, and especially for this young chef, tend to be filled with the same celebrity chefs and the same dishes that are well known. You might have seen or heard about some of these individuals. So how do you approach the task of creating when for a very long time you have been trained to follow orders, when you were told specifically what you were meant to do, and when your superheroes tend to be very common to those of everyone else around you because you spend most of your time working in the same kitchen with like-minded people. How can you approach the task of creating when your frame of reference is not different from everyone else trying to do the same thing? Well, what happens is that usually you're not very creative. Unfortunately, you've been trained to follow and the result is more following. So how do we solve this problem? How do we approach this? We have these massive challenges coming our way. If we want to sustain nine billion people, if we want to move away from heavily muscled foods into other alternatives, we need to rethink how we produce this food, how we consume it, 
how we make it into something that is delicious and that won't only be yet another diet fat of which you get really tired the next time you can smell a delicious steak sizzling. We need to make these things delicious and this re demands creating new ideas, this demands reinventing the way we're thinking about it. So how do we do it? How do we avoid this creative trap? Well, the first step is to realize that creating new ideas and putting them in place successfully doesn't happen overnight. It's a process, it involves many different skills and these skills need to be exercised. And the only way to create the opportunity to exercise these skills is if already in our organizations we give young cooks and other young professionals the opportunity to create for themselves. If with guidance we push them to look a little bit beyond their original frame of reference, if we invite them to find different sources of inspiration and different sources of knowledge than the same three main well-known chefs that even though they're doing something amazing, they're not the only one. And they are definitely not the ones that are gonna allow us to recombine the whole ideas and appreciate the whole spectrum of nature around us to produce the food of tomorrow. For this, we need to delegate the decisions we make. If we stop this chef from being the center of this universe, and instead of that, invite every single one to make a creative approach, to look a little bit beyond to where they looked the day before, and try to figure out what is it that they love, and how is it that they can accomplish getting part of this universe that we're trying to create, and this vision that we want to realize of a better food, more delicious for tomorrow. Well, to give you an example, and something very concrete, let's look at a salad. A salad is mostly made out of leaves, and leaves we tend to think as the three different varieties we find in the supermarket, but there are many, many different sorts of them. Some are spicy, some are even salty, some are really sour, some grow in your local garden. In fact, when we were just having lunch before, we realized there was a packet of nasturtium in one of the corners. It's one of the leaves you can find around, and it turns out to be surprisingly peppery and delicious. We're surrounded by food, and, then, and yet we're not looking at it. So how come we don't see all that diversity? Well, if for a young cook, the first time he goes and has to pick a salad leaf, and probably more than a salad leaf, 60 kilograms of salad for the next eight hours, we explain him that we're choosing this particular salad because it's crunchy and it's juicy, or perhaps because it's delicate and it's delicious. We explain that it comes from a local grocer, or that in fact we cannot, we're trying to produce something very economically, so we need to find a solution for that. Well, he'll go and process the 80 kilos or whatever amount it is of salads, but he'll also understand what he's doing. And the next time this salad goes out of season, because he's been at the front line of this work the whole time and he's had his hands deep in this produce, he'll probably be the best person to tell us once he understands what's the next best thing in the moment. If you've been doing this work all day, you'll probably realize that then Oh, surprise, maybe free sal salad is not in season, but we have a sort of rocket that just came up and we saw it yesterday in the market and it was absolutely beautiful. We have created a passion and a curiosity that then goes and develops into larger fields. When we're trying to develop a new dish, a new concept, something new to put on the menu, a new offering, then maybe the same person now with more experience and more confidence in their creative choices will be the best resource to go and look really far away from where we've been and propose something that we have never had the time ourselves to research because we're too busy looking at the other million aspects that we're curious about. If we go and develop creativity in our workplaces and train for creativity, creating those opportunities, embedding them in our organizations, we can create an army for the future. It's by training in creativity that we can unleash the full innovation potential of our organizations. And this can only be done by realizing that our true mission as chefs, as part of the food industry, is about being generous. It's about nourishing, and we don't do this alone. We, doing, we do this with the help of every single individual who will speak to every single neighbor who might give him the next most amazing idea for our planet. Thank, Thank you. you.